Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center, and it's that time of the week again where we get to take a look at the coolest new knives that have just hit our shelves. Let's check them out. All right, first up, it's a big week uh, for some Knife Center exclusives. I'm gonna start with the biggest one. Check these bad boys out. New Rick Hinderer XM24s, never before made with the Harpoon Sponto shape, and they're exclusively being launched right now with us at the Knife Center. So you can only get these from us, and just check that out. Just a big hunk of, uh, I don't swear on this channel, uh, bad moofery, I don't know. That's a, I guess that's a word. What do you think, Thomas? It is now. Thomas is going to use it, I think. That's fine. <laughs> I couldn't come up with a... Figure it out, guys. You know what I'm talking about. Um, sorry for the silliness here right at the top. Let's get back to the knives. Really cool pieces. Uh, expensive pieces. They're made here in the States. Coming in just under 600 bucks right now. And there's a ton of different variations that you can find from us right now. I've opened a few of them and looked at them. I think this particular one might be my favorite with the red G10 here on the front, and then the bronzed titanium, stonewash titanium there on the back. Has a really cool look, and it contrasts and works nicely against the red on the front. Blade steel here, CPM 20 CV, and about four inches of length as uh, all XM 24s essentially come with. Really cool shape going on, very powerful, great tactical shape. And of course, these models have the Hinderer triway pivot, which means right out of the box, you've got ball bearings installed in the pivot, but there's some extra washers included as well, so you can swap those out if you need. That way, if you do happen to be working somewhere or carrying this knife, perhaps in a dusty environment or any other kind of dirty, grimy environments, the, uh, the washers can be a cleaner option than the bearings, which you know, stuff can kind of get into it sometimes and gum things up. But right out of the box with these, really great action as you can hear plenty of length for a heavier duty knife even on the just the regular handle my slightly larger than average hands have plenty of space and then we've got that choil there on the front as well to choke up if you want a little more control i, I can't imagine many people would need it for the extra grip length um, so there you go really cool and you can only get them from us We've also expanded our Knife Center exclusive small Archeos, uh, the non-locking small Archeos from Artisan Cutlery with a new model. We've been listening to you guys uh, that wanted a slightly less expensive version of the ones we had out right now. So we're starting out with this one, the, uh, the configuration that essentially launched this model for us with our topographic orange and black G10, paired now with an RPM 9 powder metallurgy stainless steel blade as opposed to the VG10 Damascus. You folks have, uh, have been responding pretty well to this stuff and it seems to be performing quite nicely. And put that there instead of the VG10 Damascus and we get this down by about 20 bucks to an $80 price point. Beyond that, it's still the same great knife we know and love. Its mechanism and its size makes it perfect for carrying just about anywhere. Uh, it, it often doesn't run afoul of, uh, of local regulations in that, one, it's non-locking. We've got a detent joint style of non-locking mechanism here, which allows it to do a couple things. This is also a flipper, so you can actually flip open a non-locking knife and then flick it closed as well. Really satisfying to do. If you're worried about security, there's two things going on to, uh, to kind of protect your fingers. One, you've got that flipper tab there, so if the blade comes unlocked, your finger's in the way. And of course, you've got on that lanyard a small steel pin which can be inserted behind the tang. Now it's not going to move and you can do that open or closed position as well. And then it's just a great EDC blade shape, modified Warncliffe, just under three inches. All around, fantastic design and we're proud to be able to call this one our own. All right, next up, we've got a new color on our Knife Center exclusive Alox Bantams. We've got the red, we now have the black joining the party. And in terms of slim utility, these things are great. I carry my red one quite often, just a single layer thick, and then the Alox scales, thinner than the, uh, the plastic or Celador scales, but stronger, has a really nice look. And then you've got just a main uh, standard size blade there, and their combo tool, which has a wire stripper, but who out there really uses it for wire stripping, but it'll open bottles and cans both. And it, it's not quite as clean as some of the other, the dedicated can openers out there, but the fact that it can do both quite well is a, a plus in my book. And then of course you've got 
the flathead screwdriver there on the top. And it's got a nice half stop on it too, so you can actually put a fair bit of torque onto a screw if you need to, or standard screwdriver. Really cool, nice and slim. I, uh, I honestly, I didn't think I'd like the black as much as I do. Actually here, let me pull out, uh, I've got a red one here in my pocket. I told you I carry it. Um, I've always loved the red, but the black has something nice and, and discreet, nice and minimal about it. I really like it. Uh, I think you will, you guys will too, especially considering these come in at an easy 27 bucks. All right, we'll keep the, uh, the kind of black theme rolling with another knife about the same price, 28 bucks. Uh, the new Spyderco Grasshopper slip joint. Really cool little design. This is the largest of the, the kind of small stainless steel handered slippets that they've got. Uh, actually a 12C27 blade steel here. That's a Sandvik Swedish steel. So they didn't, uh, I, I like that they put that here. They didn't go with just like a, a, a bottom of the barrel barrel thing, which nothing wrong with that on some small keychain knives all the time, but I do appreciate this particular metal very much. It's got a good cutting geometry too, decently thin, nice and thin blade stock actually, with typical Spyderco full flat grind. It's gonna slice very nicely. The stainless steel handle here, all blacked out as you can see, except for the Spyderco bug there. And one of the cool things about these, uh, as well as the uh, standard stainless versions, is there's no pins visible from the outside. It's all kind of put together internally. So you've got a very clean look overall. In fact, you might be able to have a, a good spot for some engraving on these as well. Blade is two and a quarter inches or thereabouts. Snaps shut quite nicely. No half stop here, um, but that's probably so. You, you may be able to do some one hand opening with this. My hands are a bit too large to do it. I just, yeah, it's not, it's not going anywhere for me. This is a, a two hand open with which instead of a nail nick, you've got that Spyderco opening hole there to grab onto. Really cool little design, great keychain knife or great if you just need something to, to slip into a pocket that you don't have to worry about, that's not gonna take up a ton of space. Very nice. All right, next up, the first of the new SOGs for the year, SOGs for the year are arriving, and we've got the Kiku XR LTE. Kiku XR, of course, uh, has been out for a little bit, but the LTE version, essentially, instead of metal, they give you carbon fiber liners to really cut the weight down. I mean, this is a chunky knife. It's only a three inch blade, but it's, it's kind of a, a brute, but it still just comes in at about four ounces, which is quite light for a knife of this kind of size and shape. There's two handle versions right now. Uh, you've seen the orange G10 on the, uh, the interview we did with them a couple of weeks ago, but now we've got also this black micarta here as well. Overall, it's actually got a really good feel in the hand. Uh, I'm not always the fan of kind of heavy scalloping like this, but it's done subtly enough where it's not, uh, it's not real pinchy at all. And what's also cool is you've got a bit of a, a, a swell or hump here out towards the back side of the handle, and then it kind of pinches down near the pivot. So it's gonna work, it's just a shape that works really well. Fills my hand quite nicely. I can get all four of my fingers on there just, so it's, it's just enough for a heavy duty knife in that kind of three inch form factor. It is just a hair over three inches, I will say. So if you do need something that's right under three inches for legal reasons, this might be a little too long for you. But despite the lighter weight, I still feel like I can put it to some heavier use. Uh, blade steel on this guy is CTS XHP, nice and heavy duty. You've got that gray coating. It is smooth, so it's not gonna impact the cutting performance too much. And in terms of the shape, aggressive recurve drop point. Really does a lot to maximize the amount of edge you are gonna have in that kind of three inch size. The recurve of course adds a little bit more edge in a given length and it's gonna work well on, uh, on some pull cuts as well when you're kind of shearing through and pulling back on some materials. Just a lot going on here. And of course, the XR lock. Sogs take on the crossbar lock. You can flick it open and closed by doing that completely ambidextrous as well. Uh, not quite a deep carry pocket clip, not a reversible pocket clip, but they do include an extra one for left hand carry as well. That way between that pocket clip, the ambidextrous lock, the ambidextrous opening methods with that, uh, that blade cutout and the flipper there, really solid knife for just about anyone who needs a beater in a more compact package. All right, next up, we've got the Terminus XR LTE. Uh, kind of the same story here, although the liners on this one, instead of being full carbon fiber, look to me to be um, a G10 with a carbon fiber laminate. 
but in any case, it's definitely definitely lighter than the steel, uh, bringing this one down to about 2.2 ounces. So uh, I'm kind of, I think a natural competitor to this is going to be Benchmade's Bug Out. Uh, I'm going to say it because people are definitely going to be thinking that. So it's a little bit heavier uh, price, um, actually a little bit more, about 140 on these. But still very light. S35VN blade steel, gray coating, or the gold is available as well. And we've got a nice deep carry pocket clip here as well, mounted from the spine. So there's a little bit of space there behind it. I know some folks aren't too keen on that, um, but I haven't had a problem with it personally. And you can reverse that as well. And then same story with the lock. Again, I don't know if I mentioned that already. XR lock, flipper, thumb studs, completely ambidextrous knife, very lightweight and definitely sub three inches on this one. So if you like that, that full size bug out uh, or, or like the, the handle size on a full size bug out, but need that sub three inch blade, but you don't want to go to the mini bug out because the handle's smaller, definitely check this guy out right here. All right, next we've got uh, a handful of best techs to show you. I'll start on the, uh, the less expensive side of them. This is the new Circuit, it comes in about 68 bucks. Uh, and we've got a few different colors going on. I threw the, uh, picked the red out of here because seem to be uh, vibing on the red today. And we've got a gray titanium coating on this blade as well. It's about three and a quarter inches in length and the steel is K110, uh, which is essentially, it's just a German made D2. So it's definitely uh, a metal you can certainly trust. The Germans are obviously have a reputation for being very precise about things like these. And I've got no reason to doubt that about this steel as well. Handles are G10, red, like I said here, but there are some uh, less obnoxious colors if you're not into that, including black, some dark blues as well, if you like that. And you can get it with a satin blade instead of this coating as well too. It's a good neutral shape overall. I can fit all four of my fingers on it, no problem. Actually a lot of grip on this handle between the milling and the milled holes as well. There's just a lot of surface area to grab onto. So it's not, uh, it, it's not a slippery knife whatsoever. Deep carry pocket clip, right side tip up only in this case, and a nice inset liner lock put together really well for its price point. Now there is kind of an opening hole here in the blade. It's a little tricky. You can do it one handed uh, with your thumb. I have to kind of pinch it with my first two fingers, but with the ball bearings and the pivot, I'd rather hit that flipper to bring that really nice blade out. Just a classic drop point, high flat grind. It's going to do whatever you need. Very nice. All right, next up we have the Best Tech Fin, also coming in at 68 bucks. Also with a blade uh, a little bit bigger in this case, 3.6-ish inches uh, with 14C28N Sandvik stainless. Uh, really nice stainless on the, uh, the more budget side of things, and one of my favorites, in fact. You've got this dagger style spear point, not sharp on the top edge, and it is pretty thick there, so it's not something you're gonna wanna really sharpen uh, on your own. If you were inclined, you'd have a really thick chunky edge there um, but it is ground back towards that and normally this is the point where i say that type of geometry is really good at relieving uh, that drag point along the spine you're able to kind of go around corners a little better but in this case i think it's more you know just more for the looks because you've got this fuller here and that introduces another shoulder <laughs> to get around when you're going through stuff like that so maybe a little bit it helps there but it's not you know it, it's not going to be all it can be in that regard because of that feature. But you do get a really cool look, especially on this two-tone version. You can get it in satin or black or the half and half here where you get some of the black on the, uh, the Ricasso there and into the, the fuller as well and on the spine of the blade as well, actually. Enough about the blade, back to the handles. Several G10s, including some more boring ones, but we've also got this orange and beige, orange, beige, and black, actually, G10. Liner lock again, deep carry pocket clip, non-reversible again, ball bearings again, everything you need in a nice affordable flipper with a lot of real estate on the handle here too. Plenty to hold on to, good solid working profile, but a good kind of stylish profile as well. All right, next up, we're gonna get into some of the more expensive best techs. This is the Kombu Falco coming in about 160. Blade steel here gets a bump to a 154 cm, about three and a half inches. And this shape I'm really responding to. I like the amount of belly there. You guys know I like a drop point. And I love the plunge line. It's nice and angled, curves, almost inverse to the belly of the blade. It has a really cool look going on. 
plus it's just going to be downright usable as well. You do have a lot of belly for some kind of longer sweeping slices, but because the blade kind of points down and the belly starts by coming down rather than straight out and up, the tip is brought down enough you can still kind of open boxes and stuff effectively with it as well. I'm actually not sure what the liner material is here, but it looks like titanium. So you got a bump up there as well. Also milled titanium pocket clip there that looks really nice. As for the handle material, there's some different G10 kind of composites, essentially. This is a, or sorry, I say G10, carbon fiber. This is in carbon fiber and orange. There are some other colors as well, but I like this one and I like the way it plays off of the gold pivot collar, gold accents and hardware as well. Beyond that, Yes, it is a ball bearing flipper, a little bit easier to open with that blade cut out if you want to do it with a thumb, but I'm still kind of finding myself pinching it. I can do it, but the pinch is a little easier or flip it, cut it, get on with your day. All right, this next one's another jump up in price and materials uh, and another kombu design as well. This is the Best Tech Kombu Samari coming in at 272 for this version right here. Blade steel here is M390, so a definite bump up over those previous ones and a longer blade, almost four inches. We're about 3.8 on this guy. Really nice horizontal satin grain as well. Similar plunge line uh, with that kind of arcing line to it. Really cool blade shape overall. There's no compound grinds, but you do get kind of that sharp point here at the transition. I don't know. I, I think this would be a very usable shape as well. Definitely a very agile tip. That tip itself, very good on some detail things, but then you got a little more kind of chunkiness back towards the back for powering through some cuts and kind of similar to that recurve on that Kiku XR. If you start a cut back here on the main section and you're pulling this way, you're going to have some pretty good shearing power there right near that transition. Kind of cool. Handles here are full titanium. You got a frame lock, really nice milling going on, milled pocket clip, milled back spacer as well. Put together really nicely, folds up, fairly compact for a roughly four inch knife. And then yeah, it flips open quite nicely as well. All right, next up, we've got a new Berg Blades knife. Uh, this is actually uh, OEM'd for them by Wee Knife Company. So you guys know Wee Knives puts together a good knife. This one comes in about 305 right now. Blades just under three inches. I really like the clip point shape here. I don't know if this is intentional or not actually, but there's just a hint of recurve here near the back edge that gives it a little bit of kind of swagger, I think. I really like it. Blade steel itself, 20 CV. You've essentially got a um, kind of a heavy stone washed or a, uh, it's not a black stone wash, but it's kind of, it, the words are escaping me, but it's kind of dark acid etched in, into kind of a matte gray and then tumbled for this kind of look coordinates really well with the titanium frame in this case, which there are a few different options available with or without inlays and a uh, OD green G10 or carbon fiber inlays uh, on the bolster. As you can see, we've got carbon fiber on this one, which does come in on both sides. Overall, it's a fairly simple handle shape or handle design, but you do have a nice curve going on. It's kind of a three and a half finger grip for my hands here, but again, nice and clean. No flipper tab here, so you do have a little bit of extra space if you wanted to choke up kind of around that pivot area. And when I do that, I can get all four of my hands on that. You can really push that through a cut if I needed it to. But you don't have to pay for that with the extra handle length. It's still going to fold up quite nicely. Pivots are ball bearings here, uh, but as I mentioned, no flipper. Instead, just a nice kick from the, uh, the thumb studs there, dual thumb studs. So lefties and righties can open it easily, but of course it is a right hand bias lock just really nicely put together. All right, now, last but not least, we're really gonna blow the lids off your budget right now. Uh, this coming in just under 2000 is the Culture Tech Custom URS Titanium Flipper. I know it's a lot. Uh, I mean, I'm carrying a $50 knife today. I, I certainly can't afford something like this. Actually, real quick, let's ask Thomas a question. Hey Thomas, how much did you just pay for that, uh, that truck you just bought? 500 less than that knife. <laughs> So you could have this or an old truck with uh, enough money left over for, you know, maybe a tire or two. <laughs> but if you want this knife, it is going to be very, very nice indeed. Uh, comes in with a four inch blade, M390 steel, titanium frame, as you can see. Very interesting, I guess I call it a button lock, but a very interesting take on it. It's not just a push down. 
you actually slide the tab forward before you can push down. So it's, even though it's a little further back and might actually fall kind of where a finger might be, you're not really gonna, if you're just gripping the knife and pushing through a cut, if you're actually carrying the knife and not just putting it on display, it's not gonna come undone. You do have to kind of push forward and down. You can actually flick it closed uh, if you want. You can flick it open too, but it's not quite made for that. Instead, really subtle flipper tab here. Very, very minimal. Uh, I was actually kind of looking at it at first. I'm like, is that gonna be enough to, to kind of throw that big blade open? It is. I should not have worried. But really finely machined blade. You've got a kind of a cross between a stone wash and a mirror polish on the blade. There's a little bit of kind of stone washing on it, but it is quite reflective. And I always say like Shirogorov gets their, uh, their edges nice and thin on their, their high-end knives like these. This guy right here is even thinner, really almost a delicate edge. It's gonna be a scalpel, four inch scalpel, but yeah. Close it up here. Uh, we've got a takedown tool that's included so that you know the pivot here you can see there's no torx bit it's just a three prong kind of system which works with one end of this takedown tool and then the only other screw on it uh, for taking it down is here on the back the opposite side of that tool will lock into there and actually you can see another hidden feature back here we've actually got instead of a standard backspacer it's a little hard to get out we've got a corkscrew back there um, so there you go it's not a knife, honey, it's a wine opener. So if you're the kind of person that has a really expensive wine cellar, maybe you could justify something like this. If not, just enjoy it for what it is, which is really nice. All right, that is it for this week in terms of the new knives I've got to show you. Make sure to let me know what your favorites were down in the comments, and if you wanna get your hands on any of these, we will leave links in the description to take you over to knifecenter.com. No links to uh, old trucks though, we don't have a, a consistent inventory of those, sorry for that. But you can head over there and pick up one of these knives anyway. While you're over there, make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program too, because if you're gonna put your money down on one of these knives, you might as well earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center, signing off. See you next time. In fairness to the knife, my truck didn't come with a corkscrew. There you go. You heard it here first. Bye, guys. <laughs>